Welcome everyone. This is No Bullshit Gaming Podcast Two and a Half Gamer Session Number Fifty Eight. We are sharing actionable insights, dropping knowledge from our day-to-day user acquisition, game design, and ad monetization jobs. We're definitely not discussing the latest industry news, but they're having so much fun. Uh, but let's not forget, this is still 4 a.m. conference discussion vibe, so let's not take it too seriously. Today we have Philips. <laughs> Philips. Fuck, who is Philips? <laughs> <laughs> who is Philips? <laughs> Thanks, mate. Felix. Sorry, yeah. Uh, or Flex. <laughs> so we have Felix, <laughs> Fravar, Jakub Remiar, and myself, Matteo Lancerich. <laughs> Maybe we will have Flip, Philips and, and Flex afterwards. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, you, you want some, some fun at the beginning? <laughs> there you there go. we go. Oh, my God. 4 a.m. conference vibe. Here we go. Yeah, flex, I can't even Flex speak in the properly. house. <laughs> yeah, Flex. Let's, let's, uh, let's Flex um, on Diablo 4 characters. So, yeah. Felix, now you can Flex. I have him. I can't Flex. Yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's what I thought, but it's fine. So we played uh, with Jakub for you. Uh, well, the Druid sucks, so uh, I won't play Druid. Uh, Druid much. always sucked, even Diablo 2. Yeah, that was like completely broken Necromancer build. They're like completely broken one there. You, you should see this guy. He was like, oh, well, I'm, I'm immortal. I can do whatever. Just doing one But I time. was immortal, yeah, literally. Everything, everything's die. <laughs> everything dies immediately. I was like, we were just <laughs> running through Sanctuary and like just corpses were <laughs> exploding. I was like, oh, okay. When do I, I get uh, to play a little bit more? <laughs> it's just really funny. But it was always like, oh, well, you know, I've, I, I, had, I, you know, I saw this build and it's like, ah, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, it was really nice. I would say... Um, He's really hardcore. Yeah, I'm, I'm super hardcore. Therefore, I know that what they're doing, they're pretty much following the Lost Ark uh, schedule there, in a way. So it's not anymore your usual Diablo uh, single player RPG. It's more like MMORPG now. So let's see where it takes them. I guess they make it very, very accessible, which is great. The game, I guess, needs a lot of balancing after we saw those broken Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's see. Maybe you and can hold that mic and then a little bit closer yeah, hold it to closer. your mouth, yeah, yeah. mouth again. Well, yeah. so that. Uh, and then uh, the last thing is I'm really curious how will they do their end game because the only thing I'm kind of very, very, let's say, surprised that they... Uh, tied their progression to level scaling of your character means that the content scales with you. Man. So you always Felix, get he tick. was explaining this to me. I f- I, st- I oh. said, oh yeah, yeah, I get it. I Dude, fight okay, seriously. Get it. Anyway, you don't get Rimo, it I'm cutting you off. You have your fucking game design time at the end of the show for a reason. You're yeah, cutting went, into he, that right now. Yeah, he went full systems and vectors on me. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. Now I understand. Man, I have I had no fucking idea what he yeah, was talking for, about. For wh- whoever wants to get a like master class on this, watch. Crips video. Oh, There's like hour of vectors in game design. Anyway, yeah, Crips is the Diablo YouTuber guy, original World Force uh, yeah. hardcore kill guy. Yep. Yeah, he quit his job to be a, an influencer. Nice. Oh, so, he plays uh, Hearthstone for ten years. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm. Yeah, we'll see when we quit our jobs. Well, I guess never. So let's see. Uh, let's see how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> for for now, uh, we can continue. <laughs> Uh, no GDC for us, so uh, yeah, we're not jet lagged, which is fine. I've heard on and uh, read some disturbing news about uh, abuse and harassment uh, during the the whole week, which wasn't very very good experience, I guess. So I hope this uh, this will kind of just remove from the industry by the, by itself, I guess. Oh, well, let's see. No other, no other things we can actually go into the the topic of today. Well, maybe I was supposed to be a you know a flamboyant UA flamingo session, which I wanted to really go through the, all the like hex and tricks. But uh, the company called Habby had a better idea, so they launched a, a game called Snaker. So here we are. Let's uh, let's talking about it because here, ha- Mister yeah. Habby, Habby, okay, Habby. He missed uh, unfolding gacha pool. Already wrote a, f- a few words about this game. We already had a, an interesting discussion on on LinkedIn. So we got insult, insulted and, <laughs> and called names out of nowhere. So it's a really interesting uh, situation. But fuck it. Uh, yeah, can you can you please intro the this game? Uh, and by the way, it's hard as fuck actually. Uh, yeah, at least for so, me. So it's pretty much another one of those uh, Archero likes games from Hubby. 
for those that, that weren't following their pipeline and framework, uh, is pretty much an iteration on Snake IO, I would say. Or actually, I, I think in those like somebody posted, it's a game called Snaker that's even closer. But actually, there's the mechanic of the. Well, this is called Snaker. What are you talking about? Yeah, it's like a game on Steam. Actually. Ah, ah, yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Like okay. two years ago, so so I, I'm guessing like this. This is probably like the inspiration uh, behind those studios that are then sending prototypes to Hobby, like with uh, the Magic Survival, which is the original game behind Vampire Survivors yeah. and Survivor IO. So I guess that could be a thing because what they're searching for is pretty much a very engaging core loop mechanic. Then they will then slot into their framework and make millions, like they did with Survivor IO or millions. or billions. the other games. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Before we get into that, like billions millions and all that stuff <laughs> honest question here guys okay yeah. so it's called snaker right because it has three s's do you think it's snaker like it is, it is right yeah, that's what it is. yeah. <laughs> i'm not calling it that like absolutely ah. not <laughs> what well you can yeah oh it reminded me uh one interesting uh Rick and Morty episode where there's the, the snake jazz. Snake jazz, snake jazz. Yeah. <laughs> you can continue, maybe there will be some snake jazz <laughs> in the background. Yeah. So they launched the game on March eighteenth and uh looking at the game it's getting super big as usual, but we still it's don't not know. getting super big. Come on, man. Okay, it's not that big that survival. It's, an, it's it, in an exponential growth phase. It hasn't it's gone an exponential big yet. growth yeah. phase, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll is. see. It's nowhere we'll near nowhere near the Survivor IO global launch. Yeah, yeah, but but we'll see after a month where it where it goes. I guess more, much more closely. Um, the other thing is that uh, it's pretty much as said following the meta game pattern that Hub uses, and now I guess we can expect more games out of it because in the end it was developed by another team that uh, pretty much it's yeah. published only by Hobby. That's really important. We'll because, get into it later. Yeah, because yeah. also uh, Archero and uh, Survivor IO was uh, developed by Gorilla, I think. That's Yeah, like Gorilla some... Studio. Okay, Gorilla Studio. Yeah, this is different. Yeah, King Jaran also was by a different studio, not uh-huh. Gorilla one. I mean, isn't Gorilla like the internal one? No. I have no idea, man. I don't know. I don't know. Somebody from Hobby wants to reach to us, we'll be glad. Mm-hmm. Feel free to correct yeah, us, yeah, as usual. Yeah, that, that's how it works, yeah. man. That's how it works. Okay. Sending regards to you, Stefan. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. All right. All right. Let's go. Should I go? All right. Yeah. All right. Snaker. Snaker. Okay, so Snaker, Admon, analysis time. Uh, am I a bad player, or is this game just <laughs> way too hard? <laughs> like, oh, it's, it's hard. Yeah. I'm in World 2, oh, and I keep okay, getting okay. stuck on like World 20. And it's a bit annoying to die on the same level like five times in a row and you have to oh, play well, through okay. 20 levels again. If you die on this level, you are really, really... I'm stuck on 30 now. I'm stuck on 30 now, uh, to be honest. But yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in the world three. It took me a few days, but uh, I passed it. Now, of course, this Mr. Gachapool is already world fucking million and yeah, of course. Uh, played all the... He is in the, in the end game. How he, how he raises a child... And plays Diablo and gets that far in Snaker is beyond me. Like I can, I don't I can know have how he seven, does it. seven of of his uh, sons in my house <laughs> and still do a, a lot of lot of job. I will give you one Katarina, you'll be fucked. All right. So maybe yeah. we should rename the podcast to anyway, Two Noobs like, and One Gamer. <laughs> but Reem, Two Noobs but, and One Gamer. But Reem, like, oh don't you find yourself like you log in just to get like the quick gold and then you just go out again and you don't do actually a session because no. yeah he plays no. all the fucking time. I'm pretty just sure no. he already. <laughs> well, you know what? I I'm pretty sure he did. Uh, he uh, he was searching for builds and and, uh, and combos of the of the attacks like which which stacks into each other of course you did right no i didn't nah, what i what i searched nah, for were those was was there gift codes that yeah, gift codes. gives yeah. you more resources okay sure all right all right enough yeah, okay. game design talk more ad monetization talk so we all know <laughs> that the cornerstone of any healthy game launch it's in his ad monetization strategy <laughs> That's why, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I get to go first on these analysis episodes. We're most important. Shut up, Rima. <laughs> <laughs> at least, at least you know there is a game you can actually talk about. Uh, I know, about right? something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Oh, well, no okay, episode. so Snickers, uh, Snickers rewarded ad uh, placements are very similar to Survivor IO. Uh, there are four rewarded ad placements in the store. One is to open up a normal box on a five-hour cooldown. Maybe Remo, you can actually show off these beautiful placements while i talk about it yep let yeah. me do that yeah um 
The second is to open a super box, which is on a three day cooldown, which is great value for a rewarded ad. Uh, the third. Well, there you go. Yeah, technical third, issues. Yeah, Mr. Technical Mr. Game issue. Designer, what's, what's happening? Mm. Share, the fa- share the fucking window. He's sharing, but it's not loading. Oh, it's not loading. Oh, yeah, there, you go. there we go. There, there you we go. go. So go in the store. Yep. And the third is for 20 gems. And that's on a two hour cooldown. And last but not least, there is a rewarded ad placement for gold hidden behind the gold free button when you first go in. Uh, Which I these... already got today. Yeah, yeah I see. Yeah. Like, it's like, it's dynamic. And this is important. It's yeah, dynamic yeah. because it yeah. doesn't clutter UI. Yeah, mm. I was gonna say I love the gold placement the most probably because it's like, uh, yeah, it basically conditions you to want to watch an ad because you get rewarded before and then you get like want to watch a rewarded ad afterwards as well. So it's perfect. Anyway, nice. outside of the stores, uh, there's also a rewarded ad placement to revive yourself when you die, which you do a lot in this game. In your in your case, in your game, in your case. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> No one asked you. Um, and then also there's a rewarded to do quick earnings in the idle reward box that becomes visible after the first world. Which yeah. took me a while to get to. <laughs> yeah, like I think like all of the, the ad placements are uh, visible after the world too, no? Yeah, all the, it comes after world two. That's when you start seeing them, all of them. Like the I store the one, is always visible, but then after world two is when the revive yeah, yeah. one comes. Yeah, and, uh, comes yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what I saw. Okay. Yeah. So that's in total six rewarded ad placements in total. Uh, so as part of the Futui, you can max watch about four rewarded ads per session. But past World 2, this grows to a plus six number of possible like rewarded ad watch. So depending on the super box and how many sessions you play. Uh, since we have no retention numbers, it's a bit hard to handicap, but I went with an average of 3.5 impressions per daily active users, which I suspect grows to about four and a half after the second world, because you do die a lot and you always do revive yourself. Uh, the real question for me is actually how many users actually drop off, because this game is actually quite hard. Uh, also, at the time of writing this, Snaker has had 900,000 downloads worldwide, according to our favorite data tool. So it's still oh. a bit too early since we're breaking news uh, to get a read on how many active <laughs> users uh, so I have to use downloads as a proxy. So I put the DAU probably around somewhere between 700 to 750, 775,000 users. Meaning that Snaker, if I take the ECPMs I've seen in the last couple of days, is currently making about 17 to 20k a day from ads. The issue, I guess, with breaking news this early is that IAP revenue in our favorite data tool looks way off. And the game looks like it's only made about 250k so far in IAPs, which puts ad revenue at 68 percent of revenues which i think does not really pass the sniff test yeah man i'm I, quite I confident about my numbers but the iap numbers here look a bit too low what yeah do you i think? was checking the numbers in in our second favorite data tool and it looks like it's making 120k a day ah that would make a lot more sense yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay so that would probably put us about uh in the last week then do some quick maths here so that Plug would be into your 15, no, I don't have time for that, but no, I would think probably about 15 to 20%. That would be roughly amount. Dude, I would expect yeah. way more. Yeah, me either. I would also expect way more. You know, yeah. do you remember when I said it's uh, on Survivor IO, it's like 50-50? And like, no, 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 no way. It's not going to have blah, blah, blah. But, you no, think it's going to be one of those moments again where I have to eat some humble pie when I actually get the daily yeah, active think, numbers out in like two, three weeks? Yeah, man, like they're, they're, they have so many uh, other rewarded placements. I would expect um, these at least be like 40% or 30 to 40%. Yeah, also, it's a bit hard to say also without the DAU numbers, yeah, but yeah, keep, like uh, what keep, I said is like three and a half, uh, three point five to four point five like um, ad watches per user, probably within like an ad view array of about seventy percent. So right now it looks like it's from the numbers I'm seeing seventy percent of the revenue, but if it's earning one hundred and twenty k a day, that would mean since it's about twenty k a day, what's that like? 
you said 120 or 220? 120. 120. 120. No way. Yeah, so that no would be ways. about 20 no. to 30 percent of that like, would be ad revenue then. Yeah, keep if those mind, numbers are correct. Keep in mind, if I get it right, that you can revive multiple times per day for an ad. Mm. I think like two times. Really? Yeah, no, you can. I, yeah, you can. You can. Okay. Yeah. 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 Depends on the session. Yeah, yeah. depends uh, if you're a noob like yeah. Felix or Phillips. Maybe Phillips Felix, is the yeah, Phillips. Yeah, yeah, Phillips is the new the noob. Yeah, okay. but but they could they could definitely take a few more. A hundred percent. That's what I wanted to discuss yeah. as well. Like one thing that when I was playing the game that kind of popped into my mind. Uh, you know that like Rima, when you open the first game, you see that pop up that shows like Rampage suit, and basically if you click on it, it takes you directly to the store. So there's a pop up of exactly that that you're showing right now. Like I just thought from a game designer hat on, like what type of IAP conversions do you think this actually leads to? Very good. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> yeah, I think it's uh, like if you if you would want and to go against this with uh, doubling the idle currency like they had here, yeah, which they actually have the ad placement here. It's just yeah. not shown here, but once per day you can you can pretty much. Not double, but get the two hour or two, three hours. Yeah. No, you, no, you have two uh, two quick earnings for yeah. two for quick ads. earnings yeah. and, and then add because the, the quick earnings, the ones that consume energy, that's a mechanism for you to have a short session. So you can immediately get rid of the energy and yeah. trade yeah. it for something because yeah, yeah, you don't yeah. have pl- time to play it. Yeah, but the ad placement is not really doubling it. It's just again another in the energy thing. Okay. So, Here's the thing, right? Like me with my admon hat on, I was looking at that. And if you actually put that placement as a welcome back, like idle, like and make it dynamic. So if a user hasn't make, made an IAP purchase, basically, then you start showing that instead. Like I was calculating uh, where basically you can 2x your offline earnings. I crunched the numbers. And if you actually get an opt-in rate of 75%, which is usually what you see on those on idle games, at least when mm. like doubling when you get back. You basically get a 0.6 of a cent in ad arp dial from this one placement, which after day 14 would mean about 10 cents in overall player LTV that you would get from this one placement. So I'm just uh, wondering if you made a dynamic placement there, do you think that would earn more than is actually earning in the IAP revenue? The, the thing is that the gacha here, and it's it's part of the meta game framework, it's the main monetization driver here because you want to upgrade your gear, and if you upgrade your gear, you immediately jump up in, in the yeah. current stages and move forward. So my guess is that this is driving most of the revenue anyway because what else you would spend the gems on, really? Like, there's nothing else to it. Like, this is mm. the best thing, yeah. especially now they have guaranteed <clears throat> epic uh, equipment in 10... Like, of course I did save up for this, and like, bought it this way yeah so, i didn't and I, I i got fucking nothing so yeah, yeah maybe fine. maybe this other thing like currently it's not even show me this is now Ooh. show me this but that's that's not for you like you know new new players you you yeah we're not, we're not there yet <laughs> unfortunately i'm glad i'm looped in with matcha here yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but i'm but, only in the world three but now they're showing me like this is another feature that unfold later and now the game starts with this. It doesn't start with the other thing. So my guess is that this still drives more revenue. Otherwise, they would put the dynamic at at there anyway later down the line. So I would I would go with like IAPs are more important for them, and it wouldn't really make the cut there. Yeah, but uh, this rampage suit is uh, the same thing that was in the Survivor IO. Uh, there yeah, was yeah. something like S whatever um, chest. They still there. have it there. Yeah, and it's like, oh well, this is only for twenty four hours, and they keep, uh, you know, keep it there for. Yeah, I've forever. had it for uh, yeah, it was since Friday. <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, only for first week that got extended to like forever. Yeah, to first forever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, nice. Hey, it, it's based on the design of the character inventory, which is same in every game, so it, it goes really well with the gacha system. And uh, give me a second, and I can show it right here. And we are there. So same same design exactly. It's almost like it's made by the same company. Oh yeah. yeah. Almost. But the core anyway. gameplay isn't. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. <laughs> that yeah, brings let's us continue. on to the least least favorite for part, you know, of anything, you know, the flamboyant new A session. Yeah. And ex- actually yeah, this is definitely not ex- as exciting as the global launch of Survivor IO. So why? because it's not even close to the scale of uh, Survivor, as I said. And actually, there's nothing new in terms of the UA channels uh, or creatives. 
Uh, it's actually pretty basic. At least that was my initial idea when I was starting to look into things. So, <laughs> hey, and that kind of changed afterwards. Uh, but I'm always a little bit skeptical when I start doing these uh, these reviews. So let's check uh, under the hood a little bit. And as usual, let's start with the with the Geo Mix. So I mean, it's something interesting maybe here, uh, and I know Jakub will uh, agree. The top Geo in terms of revenue is fucking Taiwan. Like, how is that possible? But still, like, okay, maybe it's uh, it's something interesting happening there. But then we have US, uh, then we have Japan, South Korea, Hong Kong, Vietnam. And then after these Asian countries, we have T1 countries, mm. Germany, France, uh, UK, and Canada. Well, usual suspects. Usual suspects. Yeah, exactly. But I was like, I'm really surprised to see Taiwan in the first place, honestly. Uh, and even less, the thing is like less installs, more revenue than the US. But then I was like, okay, well, interesting. Uh, this is like 95% or at, at least it was 95% uh, Apple revenue and like 5 or 10% Android. So, uh, and I, I have to say there is a huge featuring on, on iOS. Uh, so I guess this is also like part of the, like why Taiwan is so so high in, in, uh, up in the charts. Maybe this could be um, changing um, during the month. Uh, well, I'm expecting this to change, actually. Well, never mind. Uh, and also, everybody's bitching about iOS. Well, there you go. <laughs> kind of not death at all. Uh, but this is only IIP, so uh, the game makes 120k, as I said. And in total, from what I see in the you know, f- second favorite data tool, it's like 400 of 500 since launch. But and it could be still just a little yes. bit. It could be still skewed because this is just ramp up numbers. Which yeah, of course. Get to be kind of wrong but a little bit. I was I checked how much money Survivor IO made after four compared days compared to this. Yeah. Compared to this, so uh, Survivor IO all, was already making 240k a day four days after global launch. Mm, okay. This game 120. There you go. Obviously, it's not saying anything, but yeah, maybe there isn't. <laughs> <laughs> but let uh, let's take a step back uh, into the into the actual soft launch of the game because uh, this game was soft launched last year in what February twenty twenty two, maybe even before that because uh, from what I found out, thanks to our fans, um, that our favorite data tools they don't see the open beta or uh, any any other pre-production uh, phase uh, on Google Play. So this, you know, every game can be in open beta testing uh, and it's not visible in any of those tools. So, but yeah, okay. Anyway, like this is uh, from 2022, February. In, it was so flash in Italy, France and Germany. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, seriously. <laughs> but okay. Uh, nothing was happening pretty much the whole year until October 2022, uh, where they ran some UA uh, and added and. UK into the mix, made a few hundred dollars. Uh, then again, new build in November, same thing, uh, basically nothing us- unusual. Until January 2023, when they added Indonesia and Philippines, I guess, to do the like some tech tests, I, I assume, and added Canada and Australia. And then that was like, this is all like the, with the UA, all my assumptions. But then I actually checked these uh, UA channels in, the, in our favorite data tools and the favorite data tool said that they st- actually started running the UA in January and they were not running anything before. So I guess they, it was just sitting in the sitting in the in the in the store and then maybe they got some initial push from the, the Google there or just random organic traffic. Nobody knows. And then uh, yeah, so let's let's take a look at the creative. So I'm going to share creatives, uh, which I. Uh, uh, downloaded from from the da- favorite data tool, um, and then uh, I'm gonna just showcase it actually in the in our new layout because I have it in the slides and it's it kind of sucks. Uh, I want to just showcase multiple uh, multiple creatives next to each other, but they, oh my god, so many different creatives. So uh, let's like, let, yeah, let's actually open up this, uh, this presentation. When you say so many creatives, like usually, how many do you have at this stage? Just so I know if it's. Well, for this, so I was I was looking into Facebook as library. They have already like 120 uh, or maybe even more uh, uh, creatives in there, and then there's like 70 pages in uh, in our favorite data tool to each uh, each network. 
So but that like, means how many different concepts, you know, because exactly, yeah, exactly it's not, it can be as big of a number with different formats. Different formats, yes. Uh, but this feels, I mean, I have, usually when I when we are talking about, uh, about these games, um, it's anything between like 10 to 20, uh, 20 creative concepts. For a soft this, launch game. For soft launch and global launch game afterwards. Yep. Uh, this feels like it's like, like 50. <laughs> it's like, it's really a lot. So, yeah, there are so many different twists to the creative concepts they used, uh, which I really love because it's all all the things that I've been talking about all the time. But let's also stop with one particular creative with uh, with one influencer. So I'm going to share this uh, and then uh, just for you guys to see. uh, And then I'm going to add this because uh, it's way better. Uh, Let's see if we don't, don't agree. So they use a lot of... UGC concepts. Uh, I can just uh, here, and it's like different uh, different uh, people in. Uh, I can I can show you this uh, other UGC concept. This is like real people talking about the game. Like, yeah, okay, what's happening? You mean mobile ad creative actors? <laughs> <laughs> mobile ad creatives. No, I see. Okay, so I will add uh, the music here, but then. Then this is this is really snake games important. One, snake. So watch it's this. It's one of the most popular casual snake games. It's actually really enjoyable, unlike other games. It doesn't have a bunch it's, of ads to just randomly pop It's so pop fucking up. amazing. It's Maybe if my fucking it's internet actually, really actually works, then really I will be able to see the, uh, the creators. But I will show you that. Anyway. Up, so so what like oh, make you fight. The a the Tap question is like who do you think like how do you think this was created? How much money did they actually? It's one of the most popular casual snake games. Use for this it's game, actually <laughs> really enjoyable, unlike other games. It doesn't have a bunch of ads to just randomly pop up, and it's not pay to win. It's actually really fun because it's this, really busy and you'll have I to face it. waves of monsters. But when you level up, you'll get three skills to choose from that'll make you fight a lot better. Mm, that is really interesting because it tells me one other information. I'll get back to it. Okay. So we have this, uh, uh, this person. This is in usual a UGC type of creative. So, first question Floating is, head on the right side of the screen for those not seeing. <laughs> yes, no, no, no. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be in there. Uh, don't worry. So, so how uh, how much money do you think it's uh, it's actually that, does this cost uh, for for the company? Fourteen thousand eight hundred and sixty two dollars. Point twenty three cents. Exactly. Now the thing is, this is fucking AI. So this is not the human, the real human. So this is. Uh, yeah, this is created for from to, the tool, and how do I know it? Because I used it as well. <laughs> <laughs> this is yeah, this is fake. Uh, so this is uh, an AI. So the face is also fake. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the face is fake. His motions are fake. Exactly. The voice is of course it's, it's voice all AI. doesn't exist. Yeah. This okay. person doesn't exist. It's all. So AI. you're not like even the ad creative actors got out of their job. <laughs> yeah, AI, AI have come Man, for them. So there are <laughs> there are some there's there are so many tools uh, for this type of. Um, well, people, as you can, mm. you, can you know, you can, you can program NPCs. <laughs> NPCs. Yeah, you can you, you can call them NPCs. And to be honest, like this is on pair in terms of the performance with the real people from the UGC. I, I used it on one game, and it's, it's maybe slightly even like outperforming mm-hmm. the, the real people in the in the crate. So you can, I mean, there is like bank of a lot of different <sighs> different faces. You can, yeah, you can use, uh, you know, you can be creative. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> And immediately when I saw this face, I was like, okay, this is fake. So I, I sent it to, to Matei, uh, my, my motion designer. He was like, yeah, this is from the tool we use. <laughs> immediately. <Okay. laughs> this, is, this is genius. Also, the, you know, the voice, even better. Like, it's, it's fucking funny. How much, how much will it squeeze the production cost of this? Not even cost. It's, all, it's about time. Oh, okay. you, you pay this. Yeah, I mean, you pay this fee for months. I know it's like a few, a few bucks. It's like hundreds of dollars, mm-hmm. not not expensive. Like maybe like two hundred dollars. I that's even like way more than we actually pay. But you know, this can be used and and produced like in what like fifteen minutes, thirty okay. minutes. It's amazing. You just slap this. I mean, you can play around with the with the motion and the, yeah. and the speech and everything. And but it's like you you slap this on the on the video and there you go, <laughs> one. One new iteration, amazing. 
I love it. Mm. This is again uh, the same same uh, face, uh, but then yeah, again same face. I'm gonna show all of these actually. It's great. You can see uh, also the music there uh, or hear the music. In, uh, and uh, and all like I've I saw these uh, type of creatives with the explanation like what's going on in the Survivor IO uh, creatives. Here it's even even better because it's combined with the like the AI face. But man, it's yeah, I love it. I love it. So this is really interesting. But then you, you have these like mass battles, which I well, it's what I called. But they also have the style. Yeah. yeah, they also have the music. I love this is this is great. I, I'm pretty sure like there's so many things happening at once. This is actually what converts. This works quite well. So they use the same concept as Survivor Ion, but enhance them with AI, yeah? Uh, that was the previous, the previous. Uh, version, okay. creative concept. This is just like, yeah, like so many things happening. Yeah, because it also fits their meta game anyway. There you go. And you have the Snake IO, you mentioned uh, creatives. I have found those. I actually found you have you know altered gameplay. I will. That show was altered these. gameplay. You never yeah, get that was altered gameplay. Yeah, of course that was altered English. gameplay. Yeah, of course that was altered gameplay as well. But you know, it's, uh, there is different type of altered gameplay. But yeah, they they have hyper casual different um, uh, takes. So they use noob versus pro, but with, in a very different um, uh, scenario. A lot of emojis. I mean, the creative work here and the production. It's it's really outstanding, I, I must say. It's uh, I think it's uh, based on the like the theme and uh, the, how the s snaker looks like. I would say it will have like really high CPIs because of like the, the visual theme. But with these type of creatives, I mean, it's, cool. <laughs> it's really really good. And they they also have this uh, like classic gameplay videos. Uh, so really like variety of of things that is happening actually on the. Uh, on the creative side. So yeah, I was thinking like, yeah, this is very boring. But then I opened up the favorite tool. I was like, yeah, <laughs> this, this is good. This is very good. So then uh, yeah, we have the, the actual UA channel mix. So surprising things here uh, a little bit as, uh, as well. Uh, what I found out also is that, uh, you know, everybody's talking about uh, this, like, you know, you need to have different creatives on different channels. Yeah, they they use again like everything everywhere. Uh, it kind of works well, uh, and also they are running. <laughs> yeah, they <yeah, laughs> easy. Uh, they are running uh, a lot of channels, uh, almost everything that's out there, and even Twitter. <laughs> it's like who the fuck like runs Twitter? But yeah, I guess uh, uh, they run it as well, at least from uh, from start. Uh, and it looks like the biggest channel for them is Iron Source. It's not TikTok as uh, with Survivor IO. I was and expecting TikTok. Yeah. Not really? Why? Yeah, me too. Why? Because, because it worked so well for them yeah. with Survivor IO. Yeah. I know, but they had uh, this, uh, you know, uh, behind, Tell me. The behind the curtains deal with uh, with TikTok. Uh, 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 did they get a little slice of the pie? You think? Let's call it that way. No, they 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 used uh, one of their um, new products, which was in the in the beta, uh, and it, uh, it definitely helped them uh, to get more eyeballs. So basically, Habi was like, "Yeah, we'll commit to spending X if you push this a little bit organically as well, and then we'll use your stupid tool." <laughs> or a good tool. It's not a stupid tool. I'm it's sure fun. it's good, actually. Yeah. It's, it's worked pretty well for them. Yeah, it worked yeah, pretty it's, well. It's very, I retract it's, what I said. And <laughs> it's it's very good channel. And even now, for me, TikTok works quite well. So yeah, so it's Iron Source. That was surprising. Uh, but then, then it's Google, YouTube especially, and then Unity. So, okay, interesting. Uh, but mm. when we look more closely on Apple, the biggest network is Google with YouTube inventory and then Apple I mean, and Vangle. I mean, bungle, really? Yeah, I was, I was surprised. I was really surprised. Like, so what the fuck is happening in here? <laughs> because I wasn't expecting bungle to see, and I wasn't expecting to see like Google in the first place for iOS, uh, which never actually works that well. But I'm pretty sure that this is going to change in a few weeks because you know, first week you spend maybe with some like um, underperforming channels as well and then you cut it off and then move the budget elsewhere. 
so that might um, that might be happening here as well uh, and i will definitely look into this in like in a month uh, so we, we can we can have an update on, on this even in the written form uh so in terms of the retention as i mentioned last uh, last time uh when we were talking about the frozen cd and uh, the whiteout survival i want to i want to just mention the, the retention numbers and this time I actually got um, data from uh, from Game Analytics uh, a version of their like Benchmarks Plus tool, where they have uh, like data from over like one hundred thousand games, uh, and they said one billion players per month. So uh, let's see. I wanted to combine, combine, not combine, compare Survivor IO retention, Archer retention, and also Snaker retention, but uh, it's not it's not there yet. So we need to. <laughs> We need month. to actually compare. Uh, I, yeah, I have a feeling it's going to be a bit lower. This game is way I think harder. So as well, yeah. because Archer so, was also super hard. Don't get me wrong. It was, but not it was like very this, new. Not it like was, this. Yeah. It was. Oh well, it was hard, uh, but it was very new as well. And I know there were some, you know, uh, behind the curtains information. They were actually getting like sixty plus retention on the day one. Now, from the the favorite data tool, it says. 59 percent and day seven 27 percent and then uh, day 30 11 percent day 90 for archer is 4.5 percent of 4 point something. super good which is nice right uh but survivor io it's 64 on day one 36 on day seven day 30 is 17 which is way better and then day day 90 was what like six percent let me zoom this. Yeah, I'm going to show it. Yeah. 6.5%. Yeah. Man, that's yeah. fucking amazing. It's horribly high. <laughs> because then, uh, yeah, we have the, the data from Game Analytics and they want retention in the action category on iOS. And I'm going to show all of these uh, in the... Uh, YouTube well, section. Yeah, in the YouTube. I can even maybe share the screen uh, so you can see it, but it's really small, actually. Uh, yeah. But I will show you there. So... Um, in terms of like top two perf uh, percent of uh, action games, uh, they are seeing day one around fifty percent, and uh, this day one retention is actually dropping from uh, fifty to to forty after the um, April twenty twenty two. So it's, it's decreasing overall. Uh, let's see how that goes. And then we have the you know the day seven uh, on iOS, which is twenty percent. Uh, overall in, in top 2%. Then uh, day 28, which is 10% for top 2% of the, of the like the best um, games. So if you, you know, compare uh, all of these uh, hobby games, they are getting, they are doing quite well <laughs> across mm -hmm. the, Super the action well. category. Yeah, actually, and there, then we have the, the day one retention on Android, which is obviously lower, somewhere around like 40, 41%. On day seven, it looks like 13 percent and then day 28 is what yeah six five yeah around five so you know they have day 90 around five percent <laughs> yeah we can yeah let's talk about scale in that case right so uh it's kind of easy or easier uh to scale if you have these type of numbers right so, uh, yeah, I wanted to say not excited uh, about the UA side as with Survivor IO in regards to scale, although, and I know Jakub is really excited because uh, he loves the game and uh, Felix is excited because, you know, uh, because they he have pretty, the game. He hates <laughs> the game, but they, they have pretty, you know, good amount of ads in the game. But from, from my perspective, like the creative work and yeah, kudos, <laughs> heads off. This is, this is really great. And I know, like we are always talking about uh, Kingdom Guard, Top War, and uh, their um, approach to creatives, and they are definitely far ahead. But this is this is very good twist on, on multiple creatives. So I'm gonna show show all of all of those. And I usually download like five five concepts for this uh, recording. <laughs> I have like twenty. <laughs> so yeah, amazing, amazing work. I, I would say this is like a different approach to the same scenario here, where you want to squeeze the CPI but yeah. still get mid core spend debt economy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Man, you can... Okay. Yeah, All right, you we can only have 10 minutes. <laughs> nah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's right. you have You have 15 for sure. It's, yeah, it's yeah, okay, at least, at least. Yeah, so... Even more. 
What I want to longer. talk about today is not only the game itself, but the whole framework that Hub uses, because we've seen this as a pattern that's been going on from pretty much their successful Archero game that they adopted into this kind of a playbook that they now run. If but I we, we, I'm not sure if we can trust uh, the guy who has uh, monetization uh, and game design uh, in the in the LinkedIn profile. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait a second. <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah. so what's really interesting here is that uh, Arch- Archero, uh, King Jaran, Pumball, Snaker, and uh, Survivor IO are all the games on their portfolio uh, that we're talking about. They still have like Penguin Isle and like all these other games that are not following this formula. My guess is from now on, every every other game will be yeah. following this formula. Uh, for those who don't know, by the way, King Jaran is also exactly following this formula and it was launched pretty much at the same time as Survivor IO, but nobody knows about it because it was super overshadowed. No, but it Survivor was launched IO. before. before the like a week Survivor. before. Like Maybe week more, before. two weeks, I would uh, say. Yeah, okay, but super close to it. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But the so, game sucks. Uh, it's, 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 it's okay. Like I would okay. Say. It's, it's like probably the LTV CPF on the scale. That, that's the thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but what's the important thing here, and if you're looking at the screen and you're now noticing that maybe these games look kind of similar, is that the framework that these guys use. And uh, it's really important because I would say this is an upgrade to the current industry pipeline of hyper casual studios that's been running for like, what, like three years, four years, five years, don't know. But now it's pretty much dying. Like Voodoo proclaimed that hyper casual <laughs> is dead. Favorite story. Mm. Uh, so, what, what these guys are doing is that they're also their publisher. That, that's the first thing to, to note. Hubby is a publisher. And for instance, the Snaker game is not Snaker. developed by Hubby is actually developed by eduo games which i'm sure i butchered the name sorry for that uh and it's published by Hubby. uh therefore the thing is that they are working on the same premise that studios are sending pretty much prototypes or you know whatever you have there to them to test the kpi numbers and then they slot it into their meta game framework and actually what we can do we can look even into the game before the transformation so what Ooh. you now see on the screen is Snake Master. You need to stop doing that ASMR noise, Marty. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Snake Master, which is uh, the game that was the original game before. You can still play it, and I, I was able to dig out some old APK build from November. And it looks nothing like the game that you have on the right that is currently making uh, what do you mean? It looks exactly the same. It looks um, really similar, mate. Yeah, yeah, to, to these two guys, which are in line to be better game designers, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so looking under the surface, not there only on the yeah, surface. There you go, yeah, yeah. Tell us uh, under the hood. We, we can the clearly hood. see <laughs> what, what they're talking about. Like, just, just look at the screen. Like, do, do you see any live ops monetization? No, of course, no, but I see the system? same gameplay. I see the same gameplay. Of course, no, no, I no. see the... There's not even the, the same gameplay. Sure. There's not even the same gameplay. Because if we look into the Snake Master and we actually... Okay, let's just played a little bit. What happens here is that there's even not even the roguelite mechanic. Roguelite mechanic being you selecting the three skills at the end of the chapter, uh, or like pretty much during the chapter. This works completely different, which means that there's no roguelite mechanics at all. It's just a level. So what I do, I just statically upgrade my weapons and then uh, play the game. Uh, and if I'm killing these guys, I Are get. Are you playing another... this with the keyboard? Yeah. Oh, Why fuck's not? sake, of course you are in the word five. <laughs> Why Explain? not? Why make things harder if you can make them easier? Sounds like it's, that is... Okay. Life, anyway. les, life lesson number one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> so the thing is that you see I'm getting bigger and bigger, but I'm not selecting any more of those kind of skills yeah. here. So what happens here is that you, you just play that one level within like a pretty much separate segment of a gameplay. And afterwards you do that, you pretty much finish the stage and you start all over again. Which means that this is the core gameplay of the game that they had before. There's nothing like the usual hubby select one of three skills and the thing that you had there later. It's not like that. 
this is a different style of gameplay and even the whole upgrade and inventory we'll get to it a little bit later if i don't get killed because it's... i hope you get killed i hope you get yeah. killed too <laughs> <laughs> maybe i get killed because it's lagging like hell it is uh yeah so the thing is i, I guess i get killed uh so so the thing is that i don't select any more skills anyway let's get killed because it's it's no point in this yeah yeah so the thing is that I don't select any any skills or anything. Like there's nothing roguelite. It's pretty much one stage that I need to go through, and if I finish it, I start again from scratch, which is not the case in the meta game framework that Hub uses here. Whereas you cut these levels into like ah, stages. Okay. That you see here, this is like a separate stage. This is now like a cluster of a chapter. Yeah, now you know. Now you're talking like a normal human being. Yeah. No, no, yeah. no Mr. Vector uh, and system. And and you, and you you pretty much select your skills in that stage because that's how their meta game framework works. Because they turn everything and every one of these like hyper casual like core gameplays into a roguelite action RPG. That's their framework. If you see the inventory of this game, it's just like one upgrade button with a static mm. soft currency sync. There's nothing to it. If we go to Hobby game, we get the usual six slot gacha that we get this nice offer Felix was talking about. And we get a lot more money because what's here? If you look into another feature that these guys have, they also had it here. But they unlock it somewhere, I think World 4. Felix 4, 26, see. yeah. Yeah, won't see it anywhere close. Because this is another principle of these guys, that they have this unfolding gameplay. Ooh. They try to mask the game to look like hyper casual. Therefore, they're very, very stingy on new features. You get them very, very slowly. For instance, Felix won't see them at all. Never. <laughs> so so, so I'm, I'm, let's say I still don't have the snake egg thing. It says chapter 11. Ooh. You, you know chapter 11? That would take like generations what, of Felixes to get what there. What chapter are you on now? What chapter five. are you on? Chapter five. five. <laughs> Negative yeah. Nancy on tour. Yeah. 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 Negative <laughs> Nancy on yeah. tour, man. Of course. So, so they have Jeez. very, very strict uh, philosophy behind how to focus the user's attention, meaning that they first focus only on the hyper-casual core gameplay, mastering it, and only later down the line, they start slapping features on top of it and on the side of the UI, as you see here, where there's all the battle passes, achievements, subscriptions, monetization, live ops, everything. And this is coming from their metagame framework. Every single one of hobby yeah. games has that if we put survivor side by side beside it we can see the same icons mm -hmm. same thing everything's there yeah. so this is working very well for them uh i guess this is the way to pretty much be able to keep up with the very fast release frequency not only by testing all the games before committing to them and slotting them into their meta game framework but after they test it out they out of the bat, know how the you know ROAS and everything will kind of behave with that game if they can hit the CPI. And the only thing is, if they can hit the CPI, is based on marketing tests on the previous original game, which they will test like hell, like Matty showed before yeah. with AI creatives and everything. By the way, they also have the Snake, uh, the original Snake IO gameplay implemented here in the trials, so it's not yes, that fake that, that so, so is Habi the new Voodoo? <laughs> yeah, this sounds like new Voodoo to me. Like mm. this sounds like the hybrid casual Oof. formula to me Oof. in a way. New Voodoo, that's like, oh, come on, man. <laughs> that you, you and, can and, do and, better, man. The best thing is that. Their framework, my guess is that their framework is like old game compatible. So yeah. if they update some new things into it, it can be updated across the whole portfolio. So that I guess it's like very, yeah, very so if interesting. They, yeah, if they add some some new feature in this framework and then they like okay, update everything, then it will pop up in survival. Uh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, well. like the monetization we're talking about, like the shop yeah. and everything, like the yeah. gacha feature that they have here is exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah even the artwork same. looks similar. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and, and by the way, the so, like <laughs> this got back to me. Like some of the music assets the Survivor IO use is same in Snaker. Exact yeah, same sounds, exact same music. But this so is like, this is super unique. fucking efficient. Like, why would yeah, you yeah. That's yeah. the invent thing, it's the efficiency. It's only yeah. about efficiency. Because if you look at the other games, which is the Pumball and Kinja run, yeah. that Matthias said it's so shitty. Unfortunately, it didn't, went really well. It, yeah. it like went up and then went down and that's it for the game. And this is the thing that this is part of that happy formula. They'll try to get as much of these out on the market as fast as possible and, you know, do the preparation, test the CPI, get the core gameplay, slot it into framework, try to pump it up. And if it catches, then it goes up like Survivor IO. If not, then see ya on the next game. Yeah. See ya in Snaker. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so my guess is that currently, like, w- w- do we have what? Like, we have like end of March. My guess is that they could release potentially two more games this year this way. Yeah. With, with like being able to cut through like 10 more of these prototypes or 15. Don't know what's how, oh, with like how why, many studios they were. Why, why two more games now and not last year? Because they already launched Survivor. I- oh, well, they launched Panball and uh, King John Kingdom and Survivor. I- okay, yeah, so, so it's three, three games. Okay, yeah. If okay. if they can keep up with three games like this and one of them being Survivor IO, that's great. That's yeah. like and even if it's if it's winning uh, formula. well only <laughs> in this scale, it's fucking one better of the biggest game everything. launches last year. Only, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's way better. It's than amazing. It's amazing. Of, yeah, I would games. say like, and and this is the the best thing for me that the that they make it so modular and like the yeah. whole thing, the design and everything, it's done so well that it fits fits very well and. Don't get me wrong. They, I guess, they didn't choose roguelite as as their like go to game genre that they're pretty much transforming every other game to because it's very forgiving, and it's very forgiving because in roguelite games you progress just by being stuck. Like if you're stuck, like Felix here, and he would keep coming every day to get his ass kicked, he will still get resources and eventually yeah. he get to upgrade his character and he will get over content he wasn't able to get through anyway. Consolation prize. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, like, got a, yeah. I got a medal for finishing. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> his stats will grow so high, his HP, because it's, the scaling of the whole game is just HP and damage, nothing to it. It just grows up, grows up, grows up, and, and therefore like just by upgrading it, you go over it. Like, you know, this is not Dark Souls slamming your head over some boss that you cannot get through. So yeah, that that's really good, and uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward how this one goes forward. I would say, as I said, like I expecting two more games to be released from Habit this year, um, maybe more. Let's see. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I don't expect this to get as big as Survivor IO based yeah. on the initial numbers, but let's see. Still, like if they can get like one third of Survivor IO revenue, yeah, it's still pretty, super good. Pretty good success. Yeah, I might get the profitability or efficiency on this project is like out of the window. Definitely. And then, uh, yeah, I guess we'll see because my other question is that why is nobody else following them in this playbook before? Why all the other hyper casual studios that were like, you know, proclaiming they get, they're going to switch to hybrid casual never done this? Yeah, before. because it's not, not that easy, right? Not to, that to easy, create, yeah. yeah. To create this type of framework. Even I, I, I know that. <laughs> so, yeah. Jesus. Like, my guess is that, that probably somebody will take on this after like uh, uh, not not even after but maybe this already in the works for someone yeah for sure that that they are doing this kind of framework and maybe also trying to convert their prototypes into something that's compatible to their framework and then like choose some kind of meta game they're gonna go around it and that's it we'll see i think uh say games already said that they're switching to hybrid casual or trying to get more into mid-core or ip driven games yeah it looks so like the, their revenues is climbing up quite nicely and they they just released some some other merch tower defense games so we need to look into that as well in the yeah, yeah that, that's i guess like one of the closest one here in the western part uh, yeah. that's trying to get on this but i guess more and more studios will get onto this playbook because it's it's just m- super efficient. Like I, I don't, I don't think so. You can get around the efficiency this way because you're still having the hyper casual pipeline. You just upgraded it with like yeah, a this, different this monetization framework. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, nice. Okay, I guess the, is That's that it? it? Is yeah. that it? Nice. Uh, yeah. Thanks uh, for uh, sharing the the screen as well. It was really good. Uh, I love it. I, and apparently, people love that as well. So I'll keep doing that. Uh, and thanks for listening. Please keep subscribing. Uh, our subscriber count is increasing as well very nicely. So please keep doing that. Share the podcast with your industry friends, uh, family, dogs and cats. Yeah. And by the way, if you have any games that you think are worth looking at, feel free to sh- shoot yeah. it our way. As a lot of people have been doing and we're very grateful for yeah, that. Thank yeah. You. Special shout out to, to Jesper. He's, he's doing that on a regular basis. And uh, man, you're amazing. Thank you very much. So yeah, uh, thank you. Keep subscribing, sharing uh, with your friends as well. And then see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Yep.